Hi everyone and welcome to the second process video for my animated short The Light in the Dark. Uh, if you haven't already seen the short or the first process video uh, you can find them via this YouTube channel. Uh, the first process video was a very quick overview of the process whereas this one is a slightly more in-depth look at how to get started with Blender. Uh, I won't be explaining every little detail about using Blender, there's, there's far too much to go into. Um, this is focused more on how I approach the program and explaining my process and workflow. Uh, in this video, I'll be talking about how I start setting up in Blender to animate in 2D. Uh, we'll be looking at importing images from other programs and creating lines and setting up layers. Uh, I hope it's useful to some of you and I hope you enjoy it. Um, if you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel and leave a like or a comment if you can. Thanks. Okay, so this is what it looks like uh, in the, the 2D animation mode when you start. Uh, there's a couple of extra layers over here uh, that I have added and I will talk about those in a second. Uh, but normally when you would open this up, there wouldn't be anything much in there. So the first thing that I wanna do uh, is import an image that I've already drawn to use as a base for my animation. So generally my process is to create artwork in Clip Studio Pro and then import a version of that into Blender, uh, trace over the elements that I want to animate and then uh, you know turn that into the animation. It is possible to um, uh, use some of those still elements from from Clip Studio, um, but it is a little tricky to import them and, and animate them. They generally have to be redrawn. Uh, there may be a way around that that I haven't yet discovered, but at the moment that's my workflow: is to uh, import still elements and either use them just as still elements or to uh, redraw them and then animate them. So generally, you want to. Uh, choose where you want to put your imported uh, files or images. Uh, in this case, I've got a, uh, a layer over here called BG Height, uh, and it's already um, uh, been set up so that it won't be rendered. So it's just going to be used as a, uh, a background to draw over the top. Uh, you can create new layers by right-clicking on the, the scene collection here and going new collection and it will create one of these little little box looking icons that you can then add things to as you like, uh, just like using layers in other programs. So if we select our layer, go over to file, import, images as planes. Now the images as planes uh, element here is, or the option here, is actually a plugin. So uh, if you want to use that, uh, it's a free plugin, but to install that you need to go to Edit Preferences uh, and find the Import uh, as Planes one, which is the second one you can see here in this list, and uh, install it if it's not already installed. Uh, it's free. It's no no big deal. It's sub supplied by by Blender, I believe. You can see a little icon over here. Uh, but once you've done that, you can go back to File, Import, Images as, as Planes. Now that um, opens up this dialog box where you can navigate to your files and select uh, whichever image you want. Now I've got mine. Uh, somewhere in here. Let's find the image that I want. I'm going to open up this spread here. So this was began as a picture book spread. Um, it's just a JPEG image. Uh, I'm not exactly sure of all of the image formats that Blender can handle, but it should be able to handle most of the standard ones. Now something that's important to remember when you're importing an image is that, especially if you want to be able to use it as just a an element to trace over. Uh, it's a good idea to uh, to adjust one of the import settings, and that is this use alpha setting. And normally, that would be fine if you were importing something that had a, an alpha channel or transparency. Uh, you could leave that on and select whichever one, whichever option you wanted. But for our purposes, I want to be able to um, easily um, change the opacity of this image, so I want to make it transparent. The whole thing 
transparent. And to, the easiest way to do that uh, is to turn off the alpha option. Uh, you can play around with size and positioning as well, but let's not worry about that at the moment. Uh, if we click the import plane, import images as planes section there, you'll see there's the image uh, on our uh, on our screen. Now it's worth noticing or noting that in Blender uh, it's actually a 3D program. So at the moment we're in the 2D animation uh, setup which is just showing us our uh, flat 2D um, image here in this window and down below we've got our animation timelines which uh, will come into play later on when we want to talk about uh, animation but for now we can sort of shrink those away and, and worry about them later but you can actually view this um, as a 3D scene so if you go up to the corner here between any of your any of your little windows here you'll notice that when you get up near the top it changes to a cross and if you click the cross and then drag sideways it will give you a new window it duplicates the one you've already got uh, I believe as a default or at least or it probably starts with the uh, 3d viewport um, but once you've got that new one you can start to rotate this and look at it from a 3d perspective uh, to do that uh, the you can either use the the tools you've got up here to move and zoom in and out uh, or using your mouse if you click the middle mouse button or the wheel uh, that lets you rotate around and you can see here uh, we've got our 3D viewport. We've got our little image there, we've got our camera here which I've already set to a certain size and I've already uh, locked it in position so I can't select that at the moment. Uh, you can see over here I've got a layer called camera uh, and some of these little options over to the side here. Um, this one here that looks like a little cursor, if it's uh, blank like that selection is disabled so uh, that sort of locks um, the object so coming back to our scene here um, if I just reduce the size of that window a little bit we've got our image that we imported now if you look at that this this uh, window here you can see there's this dashed line that represents what the camera can see so that's essentially our viewport uh, and everything inside that will be uh, rendered as animation when we when we come to do it so that's the your classic kind of widescreen format you can change that but we're not going to get into that at the moment uh, if you select your object you can then uh, you know move it around at the moment and that's because we've got our move tool selected over here uh, if we want to do other things like rotate scale transform uh, other things uh, we can pick the right one so I would like to scale this now so if we pick scale you'll see that these little items change uh, you can scale it in one direction uh, or the other or you can scale it uniformly by grabbing the little uh, green box and dragging it up to the desired size so let's assume that that's where we want it to be now um, when we come to animate this obviously I'll probably you know reposition this and maybe pan from one side to the other but we're just setting up the scene at the moment so um, I just wanted to talk to you about those those basic uh, elements uh, of setting up a, a file before we start animating so we've got our background image there um, now the next thing I'd want to do here is to lock it uh, and probably before that make it slightly translucent so that I can uh, draw over the top of it without um, confusing the background for uh, what I'm adding to it so what um, but what I need to do first uh, is to grab some of the colors from this this image so that I can use them so that I can have some accurate color reproduction in my animation so to do that um, I need to be in the draw mode now to do that I need to select uh, something that is a grease pencil object so you can see over here I've got some layers already uh, some empty layers and we've got a grease pencil object over here uh, that we can turn on and you can see I've already got some some lines drawn in there but if we wanted to add a new grease pencil object we could pick uh, a layer or create a layer uh, from scratch uh, select that and then go back over here to the top menu select add 
grease pencil and you can add any one of these really. The blank grease pencil object uh, is blank, obviously. Uh, the stroke and monkey grease pencil um, versions, they, they have elements in them. So they have a stroke already in them or a drawing already in them. And it's up to you to decide which one you want. Um, so if I select blank, now inside this layer over here, you can see we've got a grease pencil object and uh, we've got one layer, the GP layer. Um, you can also see those layers down below in the object data properties uh, and you can more easily edit the layers uh, in this section. We can add and remove and reorder and lock and, and hide and show down there. So that's generally how I would do that. Um, but once we're in the, uh, the draw, uh, sorry, once we're in a, a grease pencil layer, we can change our mode up here to draw mode and that gives us access to this uh, eyedropper tool. So I want to use that to just grab some colors quickly. So if I select that, um, you'll see up the top here, we can choose to add that to a palette or add that to our current material. Uh, if you select palette, uh, this will add it to uh, whatever the, the current palette that's selected is. Now, it, it doesn't really easily um, allow you to change that uh, from here. Um, but if we go back to the pen tool, uh, come up here to our color option and select that, you'll see we then have some access to our palettes here. So I've already created a palette called Palette New uh, and I've already got some colors in there, but I might just delete those for now. So we've got an empty palette. If you were creating it from scratch, you could just press this add new palette button and give it a name. So we've got our palette selected. Come back over to the eyedropper tool and pick some colors. So just click wherever you want to grab a, a color. Uh, and once we've done that a few times, if we go back to the pen tool or the draw tool rather, go back to our palette, we've now got a palette populated with colors that we've taken from that, from that image. Um, so it's a good idea to do that uh, early on, especially if you're wanting to use a, a limited palette. Uh, so that you don't have to mess around later. Um, so now that we've got that, um, we don't need to use this um, this background image in full color anymore. So I can head back to the uh, to the object mode, select that image, come down to the material properties, and if we scroll down a little way, we'll find our alpha setting, which I mentioned before, and we can just take that down to whatever position we want, about 0.5, and you can see that it's made it 50% uh, opacity. So uh, it's now just there as a, a nice base for us to work on. Um, what I would do then is come back up to the layer that I put it in, which is this BG hide layer, and I would make it, I would disable the selection. So check that, now that image is there, but we can't do anything to it, we can't select it or move it, so it's locked in place. Uh, and now we can start to draw over the top. Um, so the next thing, if we if we go back to our grease pencil layer, uh, we can begin to draw over this and trace over and create our new elements that we want to use to animate. So if I select that layer, change the mode to draw mode, select a pen, and then start to draw. Now, you've got different brushes that you can use in Blender, and I'll talk about how to create brushes later. Uh, but there are some standard brushes that are in here, airbrushes, ink pens, things like that. I've already added a couple of my own, which I like to use, uh, and they're based on the brushes I use in Clip Studio. So I've, I've sort of recreated those in Blender. Um, you select a brush, you can then select a material for that brush. Now in this instance, there's only one available, which is black, uh, which isn't what I want. So the material is, is what will define the, uh, the look and feel of that brush. So in order to pick the one I want, I need to come back over to the uh, material properties tab over here and add a new one. So I just click the plus, then click on the uh, browse material to be linked and select the one that I want, which in this case is this one called Bob Texture. Now that name just comes from uh, the, the name of the brush that I use in Clip Studio, so I, I know which one it is. 
select that and you can see up the top here that is now selected as the the brush and you can you can change it up there as well now that it's in there um, to select a color uh, make sure that your uh, paint mode is set to color attribute this I'm not really sure what this icon looks like but that's the one to pick and that means that whatever color you pick here that will be the color of your brush so uh, I might select this color here that we previously added to our palette and then I can begin to draw now you can see it's a little bit a little bit large so we can adjust that radius over here either by selecting a size or by uh, using the pressure of your uh, tablet or your screen so I would use a uh, a Wacom screen for this normally. Uh, I'm not don't have that activated at the moment. I'm just using my my mouse at the moment. But normally I would I would use that. Uh, I'll turn that off for now. Strength again, it's the color strength so opacity um, is another way of putting it. Um, so if you want to be able to have slightly translucent uh, lines, that's that's where you could do it. You could also though create full strength lines and then use, using layers you could then uh, change that opacity later if you wanted to. Um, you can also select uh, whether that is controlled by the amount of pressure you apply with your pen. Uh, there's some other other details here, other things you can change. Uh, stroke, you can add post-processing. Uh, you can choose what kind of end you want for your lines, whether it's rounded or square. Um, I normally have post-processing turned on and, and a small amount of simplification added, uh, but you don't have to. So if I reduce the size of my line, you can either slide back and forth or you can click and type your size. Let's see where we are. So that's still a little bit large. So I'm, I'm trying to create the, uh, the line that is the top of the water here, the one that runs across the top. So I'm just going to reduce it a little more. Uh, there are also keyboard shortcuts, which is what I'm using now to increase and decrease the size of your line. Now that looks that looks pretty good. So I'm going to draw my line roughly. Now if I was using a pen, I'd be a bit more accurate, but it doesn't really matter because I can now uh, edit that line, uh, which is one of the beauties of uh, Blender, in that it uses vector lines that can be easily edited. Um, so if I head from draw mode to sculpt mode and pick one of these pull and push tools here, I can now start to move, you know, I can grab the points on this line and, and start to start to move it around. Uh, you can also change the size of this to make it uh, closer to what you want. And you can also go back in afterwards and uh, smooth things out. So there's a smooth tool here. You can adjust the strength. You can go in and, and smooth out that line, get rid of any any kinks that might be there. And that's how you can create a line. So obviously it would take me a little while to, to draw all of these and I'm not going to do that in this video but the reason I wanted to draw a, a few lines was to show you something that can be a bit tricky in Blender and that's working out how to arrange your lines and how to uh, order them easily. So layers don't work exactly as you would expect in Blender. Um, they're a little bit different and there are a few different ways you can use layers and it's sort of up to you to decide what works best for you. Just like with any 3D modeling or 3D animation program, Blender uh, has a bunch of different ways you can do anything. So the way I'm doing things here, there are other ways to do this as well. So you might do a bit of experimentation and, and find a way that, that works well for you. Uh, that isn't exactly the way I'm doing things. And if you have any thoughts or or think I could do this in a, in a better way or a more efficient way or an easier way, please let me know in the comments. I'd, I'd love to hear some other, other ways to do things. I, um, I generally approach learning software like this um, as something, uh, you know, a process where I will develop my own own workflow and own techniques as I go, uh, because I know that it doesn't really matter which way you go about it. So if we add another line, um, if I leave it in the, the same grease pencil object here, uh, but create a new layer within the grease pencil object, 
uh, I can go down to Object Data Properties uh, and add a new layer. And you'll see when I did that, it, it also appeared in the this window at the top. Uh, and we can rename that whatever we want. So let's say we call it Water Fill. And let's uh, name the one I just did Water Horizon. But it can be whatever you want. Uh, and I'm going to move that up above water fill. So that's that's the order that they will layer themselves in the scene. Uh, I'm going to lock water horizon for now. And then in water fill, I'm going to jump back to draw mode, uh, select a new color. Uh, I'm going to increase the size of my brush until I'm happy with it. And then I'm just gonna scribble some lines in here, being deliberately messy, so I can show you uh, how this might work. So I've created a bit of a mess there with those lines, but not to worry, I can head back into sculpt mode and I can start to move these lines uh, back into position. I can corral them where I want them to be. And in this case, I'm just gonna uh, move them all down below the horizon a little bit and maybe bunch them up and stack them up a little bit. I'm okay with them being a bit messy at the moment because it uh, helps me with the next stage of this. The next thing I wanted to talk about was, was layering. Uh, we've now got two layers here. If I move the water fill above the water horizon, you'll see that it sits, it changes the, the order just like in a program like Photoshop. Um, it's, it's moving that layer above and below. Um, but what, what would happen if we had a, a grease pencil object that wasn't in the same, you know, a, a layer that wasn't in the same grease pencil object or wasn't even in the same uh, collection here over to the side? It, 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 ha um, it doesn't behave quite the same. So if I head back to object mode, uh, I'm going to create a new... Uh, a new grease pencil object in that same collection. So I'm just gonna put that in there. Now it, it doesn't allow us to reorder that easily within the collection, which is irritating. So one thing you can also do is to um, create little sub collections. They're like little sub folders and you can put these in there as well. Um, but if I was to uh, draw in this new grease pencil object. Let's make it something obvious. So let's do a black line. Uh, let's just create a black line there. Uh, make it a little smaller. We need to add our material in as always. And I'm going to draw over the top. Now you can see there that the line is behind the other, the other lines that I've drawn. If we come over to the 3D view, you can see that those lines actually have depth. They actually have a three-dimensional shape, so they're just as thick in each direction. And it looks like it's sort of sitting right in the middle. Uh, but in the, the 2D view, it's, it's hidden behind. And you might think, oh, okay, yeah, of course, that makes sense. It's, it's lower down on this section, but how can I possibly put it in front if if I can't reorder these layers. Well, like I said before, one way to do that is to uh, put them into uh, different little sub collections. So now that I've got these in different collections, I can move them above and below each other. But the problem with doing that is that you end up with these errors in the translucency. So you can see this white uh, outline here. It doesn't especially show up in 3D, but in the 2D view, you can see that white outline, and that's not something that we really want. Um, so while we can reorder them, it's not perfect. Now, the other thing that you can then do is you can move these 2D objects in 3D space. So if I select that object there and head over to the Move tool, I can move that object forward in 3D space. So it's actually sitting on a, it's physically in front of the other layers. Uh, and that gets rid of that issue with the, the white uh, outline. 
So I think it's an error that happens. Uh, it might look, it may not be an error, but it's it's an undesirable uh, feature that I don't like that happens when you have uh, layers that are um, intersecting um, and that are in separate collections like that. But you can physically move the layers around, uh, which can be useful. So that's where I wanted to finish for now. Um, so there'll be much more detail um, in coming videos. I'm going to add, uh, you know, step by step uh, walkthroughs of, of every piece of, of, of um, creating the animation for uh, the light in the dark. But this was just an introduction to look at importing a background image and how to deal with your initial lines. Uh, have a play around yourselves and see uh, what you can manage to do. Um, and hopefully you'll come back for the next stage of this process.